It's so messed up. I just was, I'm in the process just now of watching the Inside the Secret World of Incels, the BBC documentary that dropped last week, and it's so it's it's so messed up. Like I have so many things to to say about it, and so many things I was thinking about when I was watching it because like I've heard of incels before, and I knew how you know sort of crazy their ideas were and how degrading that they were to women, um, but. Like watching this just really takes it to a whole new level, um, and I feel from like experiences I've had in my life and states I've been in, um, mindsets I've had in my life and states of my mental health being so terrible, um, and I can see such a relation just between isolation, anxieties, and them being like that. And of course, they they've even mentioned that in this documentary, but I feel like I had my own two cents to say about it as well, um. So, yeah, like these in in the video, there's this guy who catfishes women. So he basically sets up a fake profile. He sends uh, like messages to women, or they message him on like Tinder and dating apps. And then he sort of just uh, he sends pictures and stuff, and he just catfishes them. So it's not him; it's fake pictures of guys that look way better than him. Um, and then he meets up with the women and calls them pieces of shit, records them and say, you're a horrible, terrible person, right? Um, and the cameraman asks him, you know, like, do you feel any sort of sympathy for that? Do you, do you feel like this is the right thing? And he kind of just like laughs and he's like, hell no, I don't feel bad about it. But you can clearly see that the guy, the reason the guy's doing it, which is the point I was trying to get to, the reason the point guy's doing it, you can clearly tell the guy is obviously completely outcast from society. And he has huge social anxieties, meaning he's not able to be the person he wants to be around people. He doesn't feel like people accept him because he's obviously very anxious or he'll also have depression, I imagine, meaning he'll think life is worthless. Um, and these things together, having these anxieties and feeling like he can't be himself, made him have to find a group, go online, he finds the group of themselves. They make them feel like what they're doing, you know, they they all come together as sort of having these wrong ideas and um, all come together having these wrong ideas, I'm trying to get on the thought pattern again. Um, and basically it makes them all seem right for each other, like it all seems, makes them feel like they're in the right. Um, but yeah, so like me personally, I... I went through a phase in my life of complete outcast from society. Like, I felt completely alone. I felt like no one really agreed with me. I felt like um, I felt like I had the answers to life and no one else did. I felt like everybody was stupid. Nobody could see the big picture. Um, and it was the most, like, looking back on it, it was the most ridiculous sort of time in my life. And it's I hugely regret it. Um, and I made some terrible, terrible decisions. I said some terrible things. I, you know, I was not, I wouldn't say I was a nice person. Maybe on the outside I always seemed okay. But the inside, the way I thought of other people and the way I treated myself and, you know, the people around me was just not good. And, you know, that feeling of outcastness, that feeling of you're right and everyone else is wrong and having social anxiety on top of that and depression is like a cocktail of just mess like you'll believe anything like I started believing in things about higher powers and all these crazy things about you know just stuff that the internet could really you know without solid concrete evidence of things and just slight ideas you can really get carried away someone um because for me I have such a vivid imagination you know I definitely find myself on a spectrum of some sort if it, even if it's mild and I feel like a lot of these incels watching this, I could tell that they had, you know, com um, they obviously had overactive minds. They had the overactive imaginations. They felt, you know, the anxieties, the awkwardness, and they had to channel it some way because they couldn't deal with themselves and how they felt, which I relate to. I never was an incel, and that's not what this is. I hope that that doesn't come across as that way. That's nothing in my life. That's not how I felt. I just felt sort of society was worthless we were run by like you know higher powers or like a new world order and I got so deep into that sort of thing um but seeing them channel it into just degrading women and solely being that women are inferior and they basically should be sex slaves to us is crazy like that's 
that's next level sort of um, messed upness. And yeah, I just had so many thoughts about it because I can relate to these people so much as someone who went through hell, really, and I just felt the fuck the world, you know, that fucking doesn't like me, so fuck the world. Being that person and then seeing these people and the way they've treated it, and you can just tell when the guy asked, you know, do you feel regret or do you feel like this is horrible to do that to the women? And he's like, hell no, hell no. You can clearly tell that he's just, no one's ever accepted him. No one's ever let him be him. And I felt for a long time, no one really let me be me. And I still feel like that sometimes. But, you know, you just keep being you, just keep doing it. And a lot of times you don't get the gratification or the confirmation that it's okay. But just be you. Being you is not that person of being an incel and degrading people or making, sl like, in extreme circumstances like Elliot Rogers, sl slaughtering, you know, women because they didn't treat him well. Like, I understand the frustration maybe not to that degree but um you know find a way to channel it you know it's life can be a bitch and for people with mental health issues or anxieties it's fucking 10 times diff more difficult because simple tasks like going to the shops getting your shop and getting food that's good for you to make you feel better you don't want to do because you don't have to chat to the people and it's this endless cycle and loop that's deadly you know it's it's, it's deadly you, you once you fall out of the loop you can just spiral and that's when you fall into vulnerabilities to get ideas like that in your head and getting the ideas in your head is the easy part you know people can put any shit in your head getting it out is the difficult part once you have these ideas cemented you know you can even not believe them anymore but because you've gone so deep into your mind and you've thought about it so much and you've worked so hard on it You've almost imprinted it, and it can take a long, long time to get those ideas out. So, that's really my two cents on it. <sighs> I've got the last few minutes of the documentary, so I'm going to watch it now. But Jesus, it just oh, it makes me feel so hard. Like, I, I sympathize for these people. They could just, you know, they just don't have the support network. And I, God knows what I would have been like if I didn't have the support network of my parents and friends. They helped me tremendously. Um, I never would have been an incel, but... I just, you know, and I never would have done anything stupid, but I just mean my mindset was so toxic that I just didn't like people. Um, yeah, I think I've said everything I need to. Jesus. <laughs> Fuck it.